What I want to do in this video is think about how exchange rates can affect trade. And actually, we can even think a little bit about how they might be able to affect each other, although we'll go into a lot more depth in that in future videos. So let's just imagine a situation where the Chinese yuan, Chinese yuan, depreciates versus the dollar. Depreciates versus the US dollar, to be clear. US dollar. And to visualize what we're talking about, let's draw the supply and demand, or the exchange market for the Chinese yuan. So our horizontal axis would be quantity, quantity of yuan. And then our vertical axis would be the price of, of yuan in terms of dollars. So dollars per yuan. And we've seen this before. This right here would be the supply of yuan. So these would be the people who are holding yuan but might be willing to exchange them into dollars. And then this would be the demand for yuan. These are the people who are holding dollars who might be interested in exchanging them for yuan. And there will be some equilibrium exchange rate. Let's call that E sub 1. And let's call this and some equilibrium quantity per time period. Let's say call that Q sub 1. And just to be clear, this is our supply curve for the yuan. And this is our demand curve for the yuan. And so a situation where the Chinese yuan depreciates versus the dollar, there's two ways really that that could happen. One, you could have the demand for the yuan shift to the left, or you could have the supply of yuan shift to the right. The demand shifting to the left would mean for some reason people who hold dollars are less interested in getting yuan, and supply shifting to the right would mean people who hold yuan are all of a sudden more interested in getting dollars. So actually, let's just do the latter one. So let's say the supply shifts to the right. I just want a scenario where we have the Chinese yuan depreciating against the US dollar. And so you see very clearly in this world, if our demand does not shift, we get to this next equilibrium exchange rate, E sub 2. And there's also a different equilibrium quantity. But you can see the Chinese yuan has depreciated versus the dollar. If E sub 1, maybe E sub 1 is 15 cents per Chinese yuan. And maybe E sub 2 is 10 cents per Chinese yuan. But now we, uh, that we understand, we can visualize what we're talking about, what would be the impact on trade? And I'm going to think about it in two ways. What is going to happen in China? Let's think about China first. So in China, or we're going to be thinking about the Chinese consumers. Well, Chinese consumers, they hold yuan, and they might buy some American goods. And what would happen to the cost of those American goods? Well, assuming that the American suppliers offer their products in a fixed dollar price. So let's say you are General Motors, an American car company, and there's a car that's manufactured in the United States, and it costs $20,000. Well, in a world where the Chinese yuan depreciates versus the dollar, the amount of yuan to equal 20,000 US dollars has now increased. You need more yuan per dollar because you're in a world where there's fewer dollars per yuan. So American goods, American goods, more expensive in China. Expensive in China. And so what would, might that do to the behavior? Or how might people decide to trade off between American and Chinese, let's say in this example, cars? Well, if American goods, in, in this example, cars, become relatively more expensive, then they're likely to buy fewer American cars. And so if we're talking about all American products, we could say American, American imports into China, into China will go down because they're going to be relatively more expensive. Now what about in the United States? In the United States, what is going to happen? Well, assuming that Chinese goods are offered by the supplier at a fixed yuan price, well, now you need fewer dollars per yuan. So Chinese goods, Chinese goods are going to be less expensive, less expensive to American buyers. So less expensive in the US. Because each dollar is going to buy more yuan, and assuming that the goods are have a fixed price in yuan. And so you could say 
Chinese imports into imports into the US are going to go up. And what's interesting is that you might have a little bit of a negative self-correcting feedback loop. Because what's likely to happen if American imports into China go down? Well, that means that fewer Chinese folks are going to be interested in converting their yuan into US dollars in order to buy goods because they're not, not buying as many American goods. And so that might have the effect of shipping, shifting the supply curve back to the left. Similarly, in a world where Chinese imports into the United States go up, well, now all of a sudden, more Americans will be interested in converting their dollars into yuan. And so that might shift the demand curve to the right. And so that might, either of these could have the effect of maybe helping the Chinese yuan appreciate a bit. Now, in previous videos, we've talked about many factors that could shift the supply or demand curve for a currency to the right or the left. But it would be interesting to think about what would be the effects of interest rate changes in each country. And now we can link it not just to what would happen to the supply and demand curve, but we could think about how that might affect trade. Let's imagine a situation where the US government, government increases borrowing. And we've talked about this in previous videos. That will likely lead to increased interest rates because you have a big borrower here. You could even have a crowding out effect because of the increased interest rates. Fewer private borrowers in the US might borrow. But this would increase, likely, doesn't always, increase interest rates, interest rates in the US. Now, if you have increased rates in the US, what might happen for folks in China? Well, they might say, hey, we are more interested in holding dollars because we could, in a dollar bank account, all of a sudden we get more interest. And so that could have the effect that we saw earlier where it could say, hey, more yuan holders are interested in converting into the US dollars. So it would shift the supply of yuan to the right, which would have the impact of depreciating the Chinese yuan, which is where we started this video. And so you could see something like the US government borrowing, which increases interest rates, can actually have an impact on trade. It could actually make American goods less competitive in China and Chinese goods more competitive in the United States. And I just did a scenario where the supply curve shifts to the right. But you could also imagine a situation where government borrowing, increasing the interest rate in the United States, could even change the demand curve. Remember, the demand curve is going to be determined by the sentiment from dollar holders and how much they want to convert to the yuan. But if interest rates in the United States go up, well, now they might say, hey, I might want to save in the United States as opposed to investing in China or converting my money to yuan and saving in Chinese bank accounts. So I'll leave you there. The big thing to appreciate here is that exchange rates and trade are very linked and that things like government borrowing can affect interest rates, which can affect exchange rates, which can affect trade.